Hi everyone, this is Patrick, executive producer for the Zhang Financial Podcast. What you're about to hear is a conversation with one of the legends within soccer. Uh, her name is Lindsay Tarpley. She's a two-time Olympic gold medalist. She was named ESPN's Rise Player of the Decade and NCAA's Player of the Year. As Charles would like to say, Zhang Financial has been in the presence of some soccer greatness, including individuals such as Leo Messi. But in today's conversation, we have the privilege of asking Lindsay about her journey through soccer, um, some of the challenges and triumphs that she faced along the way, and as well as her mission to inspire the next generation of young athletes. Here is that conversation. Thank you so much for joining us today, Lindsay. Oh, thank you for having me. It's an honor. Absolutely. My first question, just to kick off the conversation, mm -hmm. is that um, we're both graduates from Portage Central, and Love that. you know, Portage mm -hmm. is um, a, quite a tight knit community. Um, I would say, compared to the previous city I lived in, Houston, you definitely get to meet everybody, and it's a much like I said, tighter community. Um, how did you find your, first of all, interest within soccer, uh, choose to pursue it as your career, and how has the Portage community continued to support you um, in that journey? Oh, way to kick us off, that was great. <laughs> um, yes, first of all, it, it's so nice to be here. I always appreciate being in the community and being able to partner with, with like-minded people who have similar values. And so, first of all, a huge thank you to the Zangs for having me. And I'm very fortunate to be from this Portage area. I was raised here, and coincidentally, um, my, my family and I moved back here in 2020, right when the pandemic hit. So <laughs> <laughs> not ideal timing, but um, my husband and I grew up across the street from each other here in Portage, and we are both very proud to be from here. And I know that I've been very fortunate to have a lot of incredible accomplishments and highs throughout my life, but I really attribute it to the roots that I formed while growing up in this community from the support to just who I am as a human being. And for me, regardless of where I've been, it always comes back to who people are and the character that you have inside of, of them. So again, um, very honored to be here and I'm very excited to share more of my story. That's awesome. I guess another question that I have um, is myself as an individual, uh, I have this incredible opportunity to work with Charles and Lynn and kickstart my journey within the finance world. And I think that they've quickly become a great role models for me, whether it's the things that they do every day in the office, uh, the traits that they demonstrate every day um, with clients as well as our employees. I was hoping to ask you what are some of your um, role models growing up, especially when we are from a smaller town, are there uh, people that you particularly look up to? I know Charles has a photo of Messi <laughs> over there, <laughs> probably his role model, um, yes. but I'm hoping to uh, ask you on that topic. Mm -hmm. well, I think it's very important to have role models and people who you can learn from throughout your life. And when I was a young girl, I grew up idolizing the women on the national team. So I remember watching the 99 World Cup. I know that was a very, very long time ago. But I remember being a kid and seeing the women have the success that they had and realizing that that is what I wanted to do. And regardless of how difficult it was, the sacrifices I would have to make or whatnot, none of that crossed my mind other than the fact that I wanted to feel the emotions that they were feeling when they made that winning penalty kick to win the World Cup. And it's funny because, you know, life comes full circle. And so now I am a businesswoman and being able to use my life experiences and making a positive impact in the community. And now I have new role models. And, and Lynn has certainly been one who you have a platform for what you've accomplished, but it's, it's way more than that. And she's such a good example of in, investing in the community, giving back and being able to use her voice and so I, I constantly learn from people, especially people like her, who not only say things, but they go out and do it. And that Thank says, says you, a lot. So regardless if, if you are sitting here, um, I feel fortunate that our paths have crossed with them because it's been such a great relationship um, on so many levels. And I, I know that I'm a better person and businesswoman because I have the opportunity to learn from people like her and Charles. That's incredible. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. For you. We learned a lot from you and the BJ mm -hmm. and uh, your loving relationship mm -hmm. and you have a great family. And, uh, you know, that's all very admirable. So 
I think to uh, piggyback on uh, Patrick's, you have a spectacular career. Not that many people got to enjoy that moment of. Of the big success, and you know, the, I, I got nervous just by watching, <laughs> by by watching some of the games. I'm like, I'm gonna have to turn it off because I just could not handle it. So, um, can you share with us some of your most memorable moments in yes. your career? Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, I it's funny. I go back to high school first and foremost, and we were able to win a state championship with Ported Central. And I go back to that because that was one of my first tastes of having success. At a, at a very high level, Got and with bumps, <laughs> <we're talking laughs> <about it. laughs> um, and with that, it's now it's full circle because we wanted to raise our kids in this community, and we're very proud of the accomplishments we had with our high school. But then it goes it goes a lot further than that, and I was very fortunate to attend the University of North Carolina, and I had a wonderful career there and learned a lot. I won um, a national championship my sophomore year. And I won two Olympic gold medals, so those were all highlights in my career. But I have to say that, regardless of how high my highs were, I wouldn't be where I am without the failure that I experienced as well.、Mm. And I, I'm a big believer that setbacks can be used one of two ways: you can use them to fuel you for success, or you can use them and it kind of it starts to build you down. And being able to pick option one. And use your failures to turn it into positives has been a very important lesson for me to learn throughout my life, and I wouldn't have accomplished the things I, I accomplished without experiencing those setbacks and those failures along the way. Right. I always tell people, say, passion really does not matter where <laughs> everything goes smoothly. Absolutely. Right, because you say, "Oh, everything goes smooth. The day is, you know, it's sunny, and I'm just going to go down this path."、Mm -hmm. However, passion does matter when you have sitbacks, because、mm -hmm. that's when you can, if you have passion, then you can get up and get moving again. But if you don't, then this is maybe the end of everything. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more with that. And. You know it's funny because you ask about my my highlights, and one of my favorite moments throughout my career is I scored a goal in the gold medal match to put us up one zero against Brazil in the two thousand four Olympic Games, and we ended up winning that game two to one in overtime. But the reason I I always go back to that story is because. Everyone saw me score that goal on TV, and I came back into my local community here, and they had a parade for me, and all of these amazing things that I couldn't even dream up when I was a young girl. But if you rewind a year before that highest moment of my career, I was being cut from my first ever team. I did not make the World Cup team in 2003. And that was the fall before the Olympic roster, and so I remember my coach bringing me in to tell me that I was not being selected for that roster, and she was giving me information on ways I could improve. And that was one of those defining moments where I'm either going to take the information she's giving me and go back and work on it, or I can make excuses and say, you know, I should have done this, I should be on that roster, I should. But what's that going to do for me? So I took all the information that my coach gave me in that room, and I went back to the University of North Carolina, where I was playing at the time and studying. And every single day after training, I went and I worked on those things that my coach told me I should be working on in order to make a future roster. I really invested in myself. I made sure that I was doing everything in my power to be the best that I could be. So every day, I got better. And when the time came to try out for the Olympic team, I was such a better player. I was more confident.、Mm -hmm. I was doing things more naturally. I had I had invested where I needed to invest, and so the reason I received the opportunity to play in that Olympic final and score that goal was because I all the work I did when no one else was watching.、Mm -hmm. So it just goes to show that. It's easy for me to tell you my highest moment or my best moment in my、mm -hmm. career, but if I wouldn't have experienced that failure and I wouldn't have used that failure as fuel to get better, I might not have had that moment that ultimately led to one of the most amazing experiences of my life and having a parade in my hometown of Portage. So again, things come full circle, 
And it's really to it, it's really important to embrace the hard times, celebrate the victories, but also remember that it's a, it's a journey, and the journey is what really defines you. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. I remember um, I saw an interview of you talking about your summer camp. Mm -hmm. And one of the main things you hope to uh, teach your students at the camp is not necessarily the physical skills or uh, absolutely the technical skills are important mm -hmm. within soccer, but um, the mental side of things, getting back up um, when you do fall mm -hmm. down and uh, continuing to push through. And um, I think just hearing you talk then, you like uh, radiate this kind mm -hmm. of energy of um, never give up and continue when things get hard. And I'm sure that's something that um, now, Lynn and Charles mm -hmm. have also faced within the finance world. And of course, it's never easy to become successful within any field. Um, is there uh, anything you want to add to that, Lynn? Um, with yes, your I, 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 I fully uh, agree with what you said. And uh, I think it's easy. It's very easy to find excuses. Mm -hmm. And it's very because at that time when you were turned down, you already quite accomplished so I think to some people, they would say, oh, I am so good. They just did not see how good I am. And you can complain, you find excuses, and you think it's other people's fault. But you did not do that. You took the advice and you worked on it, and which made this ultimate success. And I think so that's not just for the um, athletic world. This is really for any profession, any world, because there will be failures. And just like Patrick said, in our, in our entire career, when we started, um, we started in 19, Charles started in 1992, I joined in 1997, there are plenty of sitbacks. And, uh, um, you know, looking back is when you, how you learn from those sitbacks mm -hmm. and move forward and make yourself to become better, that makes a difference. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, um, you know, this was this past year was my first year of college and it's the first time you're on your own um, trying to find your way within the world. And um, I remember telling my dad that um, I wish sometimes my life was a little bit more like uh, stable, like in, in going forward. But um, my dad's a doctor and something that really resonated with me was uh, he said, if you look at like a heartbeat, um, if it flatlines, that means there's no more life within this person. But a regular healthy heartbeat always goes up and goes down. And uh, one thing you just have to do is keep forward and keep beating. And of course, maybe that just comes from his nerdy side of being a doctor, but um, it really helped me push forward and um, continue to deepen my relationship with my parents, for instance. And this kind of leads into my next question, which is, finding that support system when you do eventually run into these challenges? Um, were there certain individuals that um, particularly stuck out, continue to support you, whether it was like um, your family, coaches, um, like training staff, uh, what were some individuals that were significant for your life? Yeah, you absolutely. Talk about <laughs> yes, yes, I, I was. Um, you know, we mentioned uh, the academy that my husband and I started, and and my husband is a very accomplished man who played soccer at the University of Indiana or Indiana University. I always get that mixed up, and he gets on <laughs> me for that one. But uh, he won two national championships, and he was a coach for the U.S. women's national team, a youth team. He did talent identification, and he left that position when we moved here. And one of our passions when we moved here was to be able to use our experiences that we were very fortunate to have and make an impact in the community. And so when we talk about setbacks and platforms, that is something that we strive to help kids learn. And we've been very fortunate to have the support of the Zangs who help us bring what we named the World Champion Soccer Academy into our area to help kids with a holistic approach to development. So they need to know the importance of the mental preparation, the physical preparation, setbacks, failure, all of those things, if we can teach them to embrace it, they will be able to use it as a tool. And like you say, with the heartbeat, I mean, it's so important to know that everybody has setbacks and those, those things that you have to overcome. 
But you also have to have that approach of I'm going to attack this and I'm going to go after it mm. versus letting it shut you down. And so for us, our platform is soccer. But our approach to this academy is partnering with people like the Zangs who have a similar um, mindset and really want to invest in the future leaders of tomorrow. And so with saying that, um, when you talk about support systems, I am very fortunate to have wonderful support systems in my family, my husband, my two children, but my parents were really there for me through some of the darkest times of my soccer career. Mm. And when I say that, I suffered a career-ending knee injury in 2011 in the send-off game to the World Cup. So to paint the picture a little bit more, um, I had been named to the World Cup roster, and we were playing Japan. And in the send-off match, it's, it's one of those matches where it's kind of fun. You know, everybody's there seeing you off on the World Cup, and then you go... From that game, you usually go up to New York and do a bunch of media, and then we were going to Europe for the World Cup. Well, second half of the send-off match, I suffered a massive knee injury. And when it happened, I knew it was bad, and I, I felt it. I knew something really, really badly had happened. And later that evening, it was confirmed with the MRI, but I didn't understand or I couldn't anticipate the journey that I would go through in recovery and how dark those times were and how difficult it was. I had surgery in Florida. My mom came down because my husband was, was working at the time at UCLA coaching. And I was, I was very isolated. I was on crutches. The rest of my team that I had poured my heart and soul into was competing at the World Cup. And here I was at home on crutches, and my mom was driving me to my physical therapy appointments every single day. And with those moments, it's when you start to appreciate the people who are there for you, the people that show up for you. And my family has always done that. My husband has always done that. But I also think that the, the community in Portage has always done that for me as well. Regardless of how challenging times have been, that's it's kind of the, the cycle of life sometimes, and you have to embrace that. But the city of Portage has always made me feel valued, important, and small gestures go a long way. Whether it was an email as I was getting ready to play in one of my big matches or a shout out in the newspaper or just things that make you feel proud to be from your hometown. And that's a big reason why my husband and I always knew we wanted to come back to this community and raise our kids. Mm -hmm. And now our focus has turned to how we can make an impact on the people in this community because we've felt that throughout our entire lives and we're so thankful for that support system. Awesome. Yeah. That was, thank you so much for sharing that. It's, um, it's when you hear stories like those that, um, you know, when you reflect on yourself and you're like, geez, like I have never um, been through that. And um, the, I guess the quote that my parents like to say is someone's always struggling a little bit more than you. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, important to remember to be grateful uh, for all the opportunities that you have and you might continue to have in the future. And um, uh just to chime in, uh, my favorite one is you never know what someone else is going through. Mm. And it's so true. They're very similar. But until you're in somebody's shoes, you don't know what they're experiencing or what they're dealing with. So it's just a good perspective. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah exactly. So you were you basically were like forced to retire from your yeah. career. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was <laughs> unfortunately, um, after that initial surgery, I've now had nine knee surgeries all across the country. And it's definitely changed my perspective in a good way. Yeah, but it's yeah, taken yeah, time point. to get to that place. Mm. Yeah, and you, but you still use your skill to, uh, to very good use to make an impact. In, and it's, it's so important, sports. That's why we, we want to support you and BJ and to your academy because we believe that kids um, brought up in a, in a holistic environment with the challenges from all different kinds will be more complete the person. Mm. Um, it is so important for, and I, I, I like your perspective about uh, um, how you look at the challenges, right? Mm. It's, 
again, where everything goes smooth, that it's easy. Mm-hmm. But it's how you deal with challenges to keep in mind you're not alone going through challenges and, and to tell yourself you can do this and to push you through. That kind of ability, I think, ultimately is the determining factor of how successful you can be. I mean, I firmly believe that. Mm-hmm. So, but tell us about your, um, I feel like awkward to say this word, retirement, because you're so young, <laughs> you're, you're not retiring. But t- what's, what's mm-hmm. when you decide to, to you're going to retire from mm-hmm. your professional soccer player, what are the biggest challenges that uh, you Ooh, face? Wow, yes, that's a loaded question, because... Um, First of all, I, I didn't really understand that I was retired at the time because I suffered this injury. I took every day as, okay, I'm coming back from this. And that same competitive mindset that made me successful, I took into my my rehab and my physical therapy. But after, I think it was my eighth surgery, I started to realize that I wasn't physically going to be able to compete anymore. Mm-hmm. And my doctor had a hard conversation with me and basically said, you know, I I don't think you're going to be able to run again. And that's when it really started to sink into me. Uh, And it took me a long time to come to peace with how everything happened. But at the same time, it also allowed me to start thinking about life after. And one piece that I didn't necessarily understand the impact was my financial responsibility to my future. I was fortunate to be in a position where I started to make decisions thinking about my long-term approach, but it really was not until I became a a member of the Zhang financial community that I started to understand that I could trust people who were looking out for my best interest. And I also appreciate the individual relationships that I've been able to form with Zhang people who know what the best decisions are for me as I look towards a secure financial future. I really appreciate the straightforward approach, but when it comes down to it for me, trust is the biggest factor Mm. in choosing Zhang Financial and all of the people that we've been fortunate to work with. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. And we appreciate trust in your friendship. We become very good friends. Mm -hmm. And I think because we share the same value system. Uh, in so many different ways, mm-hmm. um, you know, to the finance, mm-hmm. to the, uh, to how to raise up your kids, mm-hmm. and I have the best time with your kids too, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, to give you a little story, we were in uh, Lindsay and the BJ's house. We live in the same neighborhood, mm-hmm. and <laughs> <laughs> daughter was, Here we go. was mm-hmm. making those delicious, mm-hmm. delicious uh, cookies. Well, I'm not oh. sure. And they were delicious. <laughs> they were delicious. I loved it. I finished two pieces. So and so she is li- seriously coming up. How old was she? she was like eight. Yep. Was she was seven. seven at the time. She was seven, seven. at the time. Mm-hmm. Coming up with a business plan mm-hmm. wow. to sell those cookies. So yeah. it was such a load of fun mm-hmm. to sit down with her and say, well, maybe we ought to think about this. Maybe we ought to think mm. about that. So, but, you know, <laughs> to, to see the, the effort that you know, you guys put into, and I'm so, it was one of my funnest conversation with a seven year old <laughs> to, uh, you know, it's it's just very inspiring to see how, how those kids will become successful one day. It's because have supporting parents like Absolutely. you and a BJ to give them the yeah. right stimulation, motivation, you know, when they were at a such a young age. And of yeah. course, your kids are, amazing athletes <laughs> think about <laughs> talk about the genes oh, yeah so well thank you for saying that i mean i remember that night and that's a moment that's going to stick with me because <laughs> i'm sitting there watching my daughter is named Allie, um presenting this business plan about <laughs> making cookies she wanted to make a cookie business and lynn is giving her feedback and ideas and my daughter's taking it to heart so it's seven years old She's having a conversation with a highly successful businesswoman that she doesn't necessarily understand. And now all of these pieces that Lynn has suggested, she's doing. She started a pet care business this summer. And now it's, you know, it's one thing to the wow. next. And I have to admit, the cookies, <laughs> they were not very good. Um, we are learning to follow the recipes. But, but she did a good job on 
creating that. And so if she's starting that now, but she's learning from people who have had success at such a high level. So again, it comes back to community and being around like-minded people. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah and and I, I agree with you, the, uh, the amazing people in this community. You know, people talk about community and uh, what makes up a community. Uh, you can point out to all the, you know, fancy city halls, whatever we have, whatever, you know, the, the, the beautiful landscaping and everything. However, I think what makes up a community is the people. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that's when, when Charles and I came here in 1990, we have never left. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. this is what I officially call home. So, you know, we, this has been our hometown. Mm-hmm. So I I fully see this is why this place is so good. And now we're, uh, now one of our kids is coming back to Michigan as well. So, so yeah. exciting. So, I, and so I, exciting. I totally agree with that. It's the roots and the investment that you make in your, in your, in your being. And for us, it's always been that way. So it's wonderful to be back here and we're looking forward to continuing to plant more roots and, and really making, making as big of an impact on this area as we can. Absolutely. So, I know there are so many young as young girls or young people there who has the ambition to be a professional athlete. So, what are your advice to them? Ooh, uh, <laughs> great questions today. Uh, I think the biggest piece of advice I could give is set goals. And when I say that, it's not you know these hypothetical goals. It is a thoughtful process of goal mm. setting. And in our academy, we, we touch on this, that it, there has to be short-term goals, but there also has to be long-term goals. And the mm. short-term goals are tangible goals that can be done throughout the week or the day or however somebody would like to structure that. When I was in high school, I kept a notebook, and it had my short-term goals of what I wanted to accomplish in a week. And I also had in the back of the notebook my long-term goals, and those were play at a D1 school, play on the national team, and win an Olympic gold medal. Those were my goals. And so I constantly looked at those. However, I had to focus on my short-term goals in order to hopefully accomplish my long-term goals. Mm. And I do say this, and listen, I didn't stick to my goals, my short-term goals, every single week. It's important to adjust them. Life is complicated. Life can be messy. Life can be busy. So be flexible on it but you have to know where you want to go and you also have to know what's your destination. You know, in an ideal world, what's your destination? And with that, you have to be willing to roll up your sleeves and know it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard, but nothing in life comes easy and it's really about the journey and that journey helps shape and form the person into what they want to become. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think like a Common theme for a lot of our guests is the importance of goal setting. I remember distinctly our conversation with uh, Big B Coffee's is he, uh, Mr. McFall, and he said one concept he continues to follow is having like a moonshot, which is like some sort of and very ambitious goal, but um, you're constantly working towards that. And whatever happens along the way is uh, like you remain proactive and continue to, uh, to adjust. Uh, I guess my question is, um, what are your goals right now as um, someone who is a mother, has a family, um, looking towards the future and continuing to run things like camps and uh, continuing to speak for young athletes. Is there a legacy that you hope to leave within the Portage community, within women's soccer? What's next for Lindsay Tarpley? I want to continue to invest in this community and it has done so much for me and I wouldn't have been able to accomplish what I accomplished without this community and how it shaped me and how it helped me become my best self. Mm. So that being said, I love running the academy that my husband and I are running, but we appreciate partnering with the Zangs because it wouldn't be possible without them sharing our vision and really investing in the community. That is something I'm so passionate about because I want to give kids the tools to help them along the way. It's a, it's a, crazy world out there. You know, nothing is easy. There's, there's going to be setbacks. There's going to be great times, but also hard times and everything, everything. And, and if it's, when we went through this pandemic, I did a lot of soul searching and, and this is one thing that I am all aligned on is 
continuing to build the academy for more and more kids to be a part of it and form these uh, life skills for a holistic appro- approach to development. Mm. That is one thing I'm my number one passion. Obviously, being a mother. Uh, my husband and I are co-coaching our daughter's soccer team in town, and it's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's funny because I say we don't care about winning, which everyone's like, "Wait, what? You don't care about winning?" <laughs> I'm a highly competitive person. But what we care about is helping these girls understand the importance that sport can play in their lives, whatever that is, whether it's teamwork, whether it's individual goals, whether it's um, forming this competitive environment to encourage them to be their best, but then being a teammate at the end of the day and being a good person. And those things are very, very important to me and my husband. And then lastly, I love doing keynote speaking. I love sharing my story and it's important for people to hear that nothing nothing comes easy and it wasn't a straight shot to the top for me. I've gone through a lot of roller coaster rides and I wouldn't trade it because during those dark times it's when I grew the most as a person and as a a businesswoman. So, I am looking forward to continuing to expand on all of those things and feel fortunate to have the wonderful support of the Zangs and this community to help us make an impact. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's so I think your what are your academy um, it's so amazing taught the kids through the sports is so many things that's going to benefit. Doesn't matter whether they mm-hmm. go on to become professional athletes or not. But the things they learn at your academy, that's why um, we are so honored to be part of it, to support it, is the really the discipline, the life skills, the, the goal setting, all those things that's very critical, really doesn't matter what they do mm-hmm. in the future. Yeah. And I think the, 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 the key thing is, is the discipline and the, the team working. And all those things that uh, you can learn, really, from, uh, from the sports. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Sport is a great teacher of life skills. And being able to bring that full circle and, and tie it together here is extremely important to me. It is. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I've gotten to learn so much from this conversation from two incredibly accomplished individuals. And i um, always grateful to have this opportunity to I'll pitch you some questions and um, see like all these responses. I'm sure it's uh, going to resonate very well um, with our uh, younger audience, whether it's athletes, um, aspiring finance professionals. Um, this was a very, very valuable conversation. And we thank you so much for your time. Lindsay. Oh, thank you. But before we go, I am would love to present um, Lynn a jersey. Oh, and this wow. is from this is from the 2007 World Cup. So since the Women's World Cup is going on, I brought you one of mine from the World Cup in 2007. Oh, wow. <laughs> we got I am we got third. So but honored. <laughs> I'm so honored. That is awesome. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for everything you do for the community for us, and we are honored to be a part of your journey as well. Thank you so much. Wow! Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> That'll make a very valuable addition to the, 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 the background. Wow, that's fabulous. I'm totally going to frame that. <laughs> oh, love Thank it. you, Lindsay, for, for being part of it. I think before we, we finish, because mm-hmm. when you talk about setting the goals, the first thing you said, the advice to give to the young athletes is the setting the goals. And I just say, as a... I, I always consider myself like have one of the toes in the higher education because <laughs> I'm a trustee. I've been involved in higher education uh, volunteering world for so long. I think one thing that always bothered me a little bit when when you're talking with so many young people and you ask them, say, what do we want you to do? You know, what do you want to do? And the answer many times is, I don't know. You know, th- th- this mm-hmm. is, I think, the thing, regardless, it's, it's kind of bothered me a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I think we ought to do a better education mm-hmm. to our kids say, set a goal. Mm-hmm. You, it doesn't need to be precise, doesn't need to be specific, say, I don't want to be a business owner of such and such. But a goal say, mm-hmm. I want to run my business someday. 
then you can have a goal to work towards to just like Ali, right? Mm-hmm, exactly. I don't think yep. she wants to be a the owner of a cookie store. Mm-hmm. However, she knows she wants to be a business owner of something. Mm-hmm. Then yes. she is already working towards that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think we should uh, we should all uh, learn something from this young yeah. girl. Well, she's <laughs> smart to start with you. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. It gives you like direction towards mm-hmm. something when um, oftentimes. Roadmap. Roadmap. Absolutely. You know what do you need to, go, you know, right. you need to get in order to get there? It's yeah. hard to know where you want to go without being able to see it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, like Lindsay also said, continuing to make adjustments as you go. Like you said, you don't necessarily have to be very specific. Like um, Ali's going to own mm-hmm. a, co- a cookie shop specifically within Kalamazoo and is going to be a business owner but maybe that direction for her right now, continuing to make adjustments and Mm -hmm. um, being proactive throughout the process is um, very important. Yes, embrace the detours. Yeah, Yeah. embrace Embrace the detours. Embrace them. Absolutely. So part of our academy, um, when when the Zangs support our academy, we give scholarships to kids so they can attend. And I just have to show a couple of these because I think they are so so precious. So they oh. write handwritten thank you notes to the Zangs for supporting them oh. at the academy. And this is a USA player, and they write a message. Thank you so much for camp. I had so much fun from Emery. Oh. And then there's another one that Zang Financial, thank you for letting me into Lindsay's camp for free. I will earn, I will learn so much. And this is my little portage team. So all oh, of the team, oh, how they, drew, special. they drew the team on there. So you think about impact on a kid who's seven years old, remembering and being able to do something like this. It goes such a long ways. Oh, yeah. you know what? That that just makes my day. Yes. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. That makes these are so precious. Like, can I keep them? Oh, of course. OK, of course. we will frame them. OK, we for will sure. frame them. Yes. yes. So. Remind us what do we do, right? To is to make a difference. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Thanks for tuning into this conversation on the Zang Financial Podcast. If you have any suggestions or any topics that you would like us to cover in future episodes, please be sure to email podcast at zangfinancial.com. Until next time.